do not just copy and paste the content that ChatGPT produces. And we say this for a few reasons. First of all, while ChatGPT is highly intelligent, you need to be able to verify the information it provides and make sure that it's accurate. And because the internet contains inaccurate information and because the free version doesn't have the most up-to-date info, it can give you false or outdated information. So use the bot to help you produce content, but make sure you're checking the information it gives you against reliable sources and then always update your content accordingly. Hey there, you're listening to the Priority Pursuit Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping small business owners and leaders define, maintain, and pursue both their personal and business priorities so they can build lives and businesses they love. I'm your host, Victoria Rayburn, and today I am being joined by both my co-host, Kelly Rice, and Tree Frog Content Director, Angel Toby, to discuss an AI program that you have likely heard of but may not be fully leveraging in your small business, ChatGPT. Now, if you aren't familiar with this program, don't panic. Like, seriously, it's it's fine. It's been around for a while, but not that long. So in this episode, we're going to break down what ChatGPT is and how you can use it both to save time and better serve your customers as a small business. Kelly, if you're willing, I'm going to ask you to kick us off. Would you mind telling listeners what ChatGPT is? Sure. And um, in reality, chat GPT is something that I use like literally every day. Um, so I'm more than willing to talk about it because not a lot of people know how to use it. You know, it's like this big, crazy thing that they're like, oh, I just ask it questions and it tells me what to do. But mm-hmm. that's not what it is. So for those of you who are not familiar, um, um, chat GPT is an AI software and is essentially like a highly intelligent chatbot. Now, when I say chatbot, don't freak out because I know that we've used everybody, all of us have used like these frustrating chatbots that don't actually help. Um, you're just basically more or less pushing buttons until you can find the, the button that says I need to talk to someone. But chat GPT is designed to understand and generate like human like text. Um, and it's actually very impressive. It's definitely not like the chat bots of old. So to use it, all you have to do is go to chat dot openai.com, um, create an account, and then you can do kind of really one of two things. You can ask it a question or you can give um, the program like a command or a prompt. And then in a matter of seconds, it scours the information available on uh, the internet or either its database and to give you an answer to your question um, or to complete the actual task that you've instructed it to do. Um, through like a prompt. So to give you a few examples, um, you can ask it questions like, if my target audience is um, small businesses with an annual revenue of five to eight million, which social media platform should I be using? Or completely on the other side, non-business stuff, um, what can I make for dinner tonight using you know, these five, three, five things that I have in my refrigerator because I haven't gone to the, the story out. What can I do with this? Um, and chat GPT will actually, um, give you an answer. Um, you may not want to eat what it gives you, but it'll at least give you an answer. So in terms of prompts, um, or commands, and I've heard it called both ways. You can command chat GPT to do things or you can give it a prompt to give you an answer. Um, you can do, you can tell it to do things like, um, Write a script for a podcast episode about how small businesses can use ChatGPT or give me a meal plan for a week that includes, uh, like for me, like gluten free meals um, that I can make 30 minutes or less. Um, and the software will draft a script for you um, or it'll give you the meal plan it asks for, which is um, really nice. So whether you ask it a question or you actually give it a command. Its responses are a result of the software being able to very quickly, like scour the internet or its database, um, in case, like in the case that you have like the free version, it doesn't go out and check the internet. But I think that we'll talk about that later. Um, and it'll give you concise answers or the content, um, based on its finding that you're, that you're looking for. So. Um, And if that wasn't impressive enough, you can actually have a continuous conversation with it, uh, meaning you can ask it clarifying questions based on its last response, or you can refine your commands um, if the answer it provided wasn't sufficient, um, which I do that all the time. I use ChatDP as like an extra um, team member. So like if you um, tell it to write a podcast, podcast script about how small businesses can use chat GBT, for example, but like the tone doesn't fit your brand. 
you can instruct it to make the the tone more conversational. You can tell it to not use this word or use that word or go look at this website or this link to review it to give it a better understanding of who uh, your business is, what tone you use. Um, or you can even say, can you explain the concept in a little bit more simple terms um, and not use all of the big chat GPT words? So there's so, so many things um, that you can do with it um, other than it just being an annoying chat bot, right? Yes. It kind of reminds me of, you know, like the episode of The Office where uh, Michael's going bankrupt and he doesn't understand. So he tells Oscar, explain it to me like I'm five. I have 100% asked chat GPT, explain something to me like I'm five. (laughs) Thirteen's more of the sweet spot. Five is a little like, (laughs) yeah. Yes. It's a little much, yeah. but <laughs> I usually use twelve. I'm like, tell, yeah. like, describe this thing to me as if I was twelve, or if I was in, <laughs> as I was a freshman in high school. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Oh man, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of curious. I could see. That. Yes, we'll of course share all the helpful prompts we use, but we all have asked ChatGPT like truly dumb questions or asked us to do things oh, yeah, in a funny sure. way. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, and also, guys, for those listening, just for the record, we did not copy and paste this script, a script for this podcast <laughs> episode from ChatGPT. <laughs> I know we've used Kelly used it as an example a couple times that we yeah. did genuinely sit down and discuss what we were going to talk about today. But <laughs> mm-hmm. anyway, <laughs> we will get into that a little bit more later. But Angel, do you want to explain why we encourage small businesses to utilize this? chatbot. Yeah, sure thing. In short, ChatGPT can save small businesses just a whole lot of time. Uh, We'll get into the different ways you can leverage the software later in the episode. But for most small businesses, time is your most valuable asset. And whether you're Mm -hmm. stuck on something and need some inspiration or need a quick, straightforward answer, need content developed or could just benefit from having a virtual assistant, an AI virtual assistant, ChatGPT can at the very least help you get started and like you say, likely save you and your team hours of time for little to no cost. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, we'll get into the cost of Jet- ChatGPT and the different plan options in just a bit. But for now, guys, let's focus on ways small businesses can use this AI tool. So Kelly and Angel, uh, Well, I guess, first of all, do you guys think it's fair to say that all three of us use ChatGPT on a practically daily basis? I think we've all kind of actually answered this already, but just for clarification so people know how often we use it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know the content team and I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I use it uh, basically as a sounding board for just about everything that... um... I develop like from a new strategy um, for a client or to like begin research, brainstorming. Um, it's somewhere um, for all of you guys that uh, want to start something. Um, it's a great place that um, you can ask all kinds of questions to and um, not feel the shame of not knowing what you're talking about or right. asking weird questions because nobody's staring back at you going, really? Like- <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, I mean, I knew you guys use it on a daily basis, but just for clarification. And I mean, I know I use it all the time, both at work and in my personal life, actually, which is uh, the personal part is honestly just like a testament to my failure to meal plan on a regular basis. (laughs) I need to use it more for that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Because like when you go to like Google or whatever, and you're like, oh, I need a recipe that's gluten free, dairy free, like all all the freeze that, you know, that we have to have, you have to like scour through everything. I need to remember to use chat GPT for that to make it a lot a lot easier. I mean, like you said, you know, it's always going to give you the best recipe. I mean, I made some pretty bad fried rice one night (laughs) due to this recommendation, but Zach and I were fed, so (laughs) that's all that matters. (laughs) But... Anyway, for those of you listening, Kelly, Angel, and I, like we all play very different roles at Tree Frog. Um, so Kelly oversees client strategies as a whole. I do a lot of our SEO work. And then Angel oversees all of our clients' content. So just as a result, we all use chat GPT pretty differently. But when you run a small business, you have to wear a lot of hats. So we're going to share all of the ways that we use chat GPT on a regular basis in hopes that you'll discover a few ways that you you can leverage this tool to save time and be more effective in your own small business and in whatever role you play. But yeah, Kelly, since you and the strategy team are always the very first to touch any new client work, let's have you kick us off. How do you use ChatGPT to design small business marketing strategies specifically? And 
This is such an amazing research and brainstorming tool that can literally be used for so many things. Um, so I will try to keep this uh, short and sweet because like, right, because we'll, we'll talk about it, how you can kind of use it as an extension of your team and you can have conversations with it and all kinds of stuff. But um, first, honestly, what I use ChatGPT for um, is to brainstorm. Sometimes I just need to bounce ideas off of someone. And while I do that a lot with TreeFrog, they're really busy too. Um, and I don't want to just jump in and stop their work. Um, or it might not be possible because I might be working like all small business people at like 2 a.m. in the morning when I get an inspiration or, you know, you've been to a kid's soccer, or baseball game, you know, all the rest of the day and you have some things that you need to get done. Um, but I also like to test the waters, like ask challenging questions, have it do some research, think about some different things. What if I tried this? So it's, it's like if you're having a brainstorming meeting um, with somebody, but again, they don't kind of look at you like you're really weird <laughs> because I mean, eventually I'm sure it'll be like facial recognition where you can, you can see people and stuff, but I probably won't use that. All right. But it's, it's very human like in the ways that, that you can communicate with it. Um, and I actually, um, I really like that. So whether I'm like brainstorming the new ideas, um, researching industries, um, or even writing the marketing guidance statements that we talk about all the time on here, um, or, I may just need to make like a sentence more concise or mm -hmm. I want it to review something and, you know, and say, Hey, this is my audience. This is what I've written. Um, you know, give me your feedback on this, you know, rate it. What updates would you make? Those types of things. Um, I use chat GPT for that. Um, there's so many things. My brain's like going <laughs> like, how, how can I shove all this information in so quickly? But it has access to so much information because it pulls from the internet. Um, if you have the pay prescription or prescription subscription. Um, and then something that I often ask it to do is, um, potentially even to like review things from a book. Cause we've all read like great books like mm -hmm. uh, Donald Miller's story brand or, um, I don't know how to say the guy's name, but he wrote the book called, um, sell like crazy. He's got some really good ideas in there. Sober some of them are yep. little, little way far fetched for like small businesses because we have a small audience and we can't make them mad. So we can't do all the crazy stuff he puts in there. Conversation for other day. <laughs> right. But <yeah>. <laughs> right. But you can use chat GPT and say, hey, based on these best practices or based mm -hmm. on this book, um, what do you think about this? Um, and most of the time it can give you, it can give me like a starting point or a different perspective to think about. So again, like mm -hmm. brainstorming. So um, I use it as a sounding board um, really to flesh out some um, new ideas or to complete like further research um, and really just improve my work when it comes to how can you say this differently or more concisely? Yeah. I also really love chat GPT for that. Um, several of our team members, myself included, are external processors. So while we do like to chat with one another, ChatGPT is a great brainstorming resource and it doesn't get sidetracked talking about other things like our team <laughs> occasionally does. <laughs> right. I mean, how many times I've been like, hey, Angel. And then like 20 minutes later, I'm like, I literally had a 30 yeah. second question. So <laughs> yep. this is why ChatGPT works well for us. Yeah. Oh, it's like we all <laughs> like each other or something. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, thankfully, ChatGPT is the uh, team member that stays pretty focused and it doesn't mm -hmm. have side conversations with us. So if you're listening, um, know that whether you want feedback on something or you just uh, need to like bounce like marketing or business ideas or any other things off of someone or something, ChatGPT is a great place to start. But it's also important to remember that it's not the end all be all. It is not the, I'm going to put this thing in and then I'm just going to copy it and then, you know, post it or do whatever. It's a great starting block. Um, and again, I regularly use it for like audience research. Um, and I think it's safe to say that most small businesses has, they have a good idea of who their um, ideal client is. However, uh, ChatGPT can help you really get in and understand your audience's head. Um, like for example, when we onboard a new client, I, I'll go to ChatGPT um, when we start doing some strategy stuff and I'll tell it, you know, who our client is and what their um, ideal customer is. Um, like 
here's for example. So this prompt is a little long and we can probably add it um, into the show notes if you guys want it or email me or whatever you want for it. But you basically can create this prompt and that's what I do. So here is an example of what I would put in um, to chat GPT based on an auto detailing client. So my business is an auto detailing shop that offers a wide variety of auto detailing services, including auto details, paint protection, window tint, and auto accessories such as running boards, floor mats, and more. My main audience is those who fit within the category of affordable luxury customers. I want you to act like you are a potential customer of my business, right? Because remember, I'm talking to ChatGPT. What questions are you asking yourself when you're considering booking these services um, I offer or potentially another business like mine? Tell me what your thoughts, questions, and concerns are that are holding you back, that may be holding you back from purchasing and state what customers want out of their auto detailing experience from both a personal and professional manner. And then please format your response in a markdown table. So from there, um, ChatGPT gives me the information that I want. I kind of review it. um, And then I use it um, like a person. I can continue to have conversations with it, um, asking it to um, kind of review its responses, you know, um, rate your response eight out of 10. How did it apply based on these best practices? Or uh, I can continue asking questions, um, to define more about the audience or the industry. Um, and then I try to always end my conversation with ChatGP for this with, with, if there's anything else about the audience or industry that I should be aware of, right? Because sometimes it'll be like, Oh, I pulled from this article, blah, blah, blah. Um, but to be fair, Sometimes the information you get is spot on and great, and sometimes it's a little off. So um, it can certainly be a help to small businesses um, when you're trying to better understand your audience. Um, but And by now, you, you knew this was coming sometime in this episode. Um, you know how important it is to clarify uh, your audience and your messaging because we've discussed it about, I don't know, a bazillion times um, in all of our Priority Pursuit episodes. So in order for your marketing to be effective and in order for you to serve your customers well, you have to know who your ideal customer is um, and thoroughly understand what they want to accomplish, the problems that they're facing, how this problem makes them feel and what success looks like to them in relation to your product or service. So that's why I created the prompt that we used before because it kind of goes through those things and it gives me a better understanding globally of what that audience looks like. And you guys can do the same thing for your audiences, um, especially if you're thinking about launching a new product or a service or you have a new business or you're like, I'm just kind of stagnant of where my business is and I kind of want to take it to the next level. This will give you some insights, not only about who your customer is from a demographic perspective, but of a psychographic perspective, right? Because anything that you do, let's take the auto detailing service side of it. Another competitor can come in and do the exact same thing unless you differentiate yourself. And unless you understand what your customer wants um, and the challenges that they're facing, you're not going to be able to um, identify what that differentiation is and be able to sell to them that way. Yes, it's so good. Yeah. And that's such an easy but truly effective way to use this tool. I'm like, yes, absolutely. You know, you can ask your audience in real life. Hopefully you can find a handful of your true ideal customers and ask their opinions on things. But that is not always possible. And so this is a really, really great tool to be able to do that. And I mean, honestly, reason enough to use it. So yes, if you are listening right now, please, please, please open it up, learn more about your target audience. You can literally never know enough. But Angel, since SEO work comes after strategy, I hope you don't mind, but I think I'll share how I tend to use this program next. Oh, so Angel, we'll see. We'll see if you get a talk later on in this episode. Yeah, yeah. Victoria goes on and on and on about social uh, SEO. Like usual, I have a lot to say, so (laughs) I can wait. You can go ahead. (laughs) And it's so helpful in developing content. So and like, I kind of wanted to just wrap up with Angel's points. So anyway, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, okay, so Chad GPT is super helpful, you know, for developing content, but it's also really helpful when it comes to SEO just can kind of streamline things. So personally, I often use ChatGPT for keyword research. So just as an example, if I'm working on a web plan for a client or doing keyword research for a blog or another piece of content, I'll ask ChatGPT something like, what are five strong long tail keyword options for a blog about 
why small businesses should use ChatGPT. And it's going to give me five options. Now, just to clarify, I never use one of their keyword suggestions without doing further keyword research. And if you're interested in learning more about how to identify strategic keywords, which is a crucial step in improving your Google rankings, be sure to check out our keyword guide, which walks you through exactly how to choose and use keywords as a small business. You can find this guide at the link in the show notes or by going to treefrogmarketing.com slash keywords. Again, don't go to chat GPT and just assume what they're telling you is exactly right. Please check the data on it. Please understand how to look for strategic keywords, but it is a really great place to get started. And it's also a great place to have, you know, your keyword selections reviewed. Sometimes I'll say like, Hey, this is the page I'm trying to optimize. This is the long tail keyword. I'm thinking, what do you think? Do you have any other suggestions? So like Kelly said, it's a great way, like another great place to, um, let me get suggestions and also just use the sounding board. And then another way I use ChatGPT is in uh, in SEO work specifically is for blog topic suggestions. So for example, let's say we have a veterinarian client based in Indianapolis and we know that the client needs to rank well for downtown Indianapolis veterinarians. I might ask ChatGPT, like if a veterinarian wants to rank well on Google for downtown Indianapolis veterinarians, what are blog topics that they should consider or something similar? Now, again, to be fair, sometimes these suggestions are great and sometimes they're like so ever loving specific from an SEO standpoint, like they're just straight up awkward. So you do need to use common sense. And you know, when they give you content, when they give you top suggestions, ask yourself like, does my ideal client actually want to use this? Like at one point, we were, I was doing keyword research for a landscaping company and I asked it about blog topics. And I one of its suggestions was like, what flowers to plant in downtown Lafayette, Indiana? <laughs> I, I was so ever loving specific. Like it, it doesn't like flowers in Lafayette are going to work out just as fine as they are in the town over. Like that, that doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Nobody is Googling that. So please just use some common sense, but it is a great place to get some ideas just make sure it is helpful to your audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like I said, Angel, I know, um, well, okay. I'm going to give you a chance to talk for a little bit and then I'm going to talk a little bit more, but (laughs) I do know that you and your team also use chat GPT for content topics, but a little bit differently. Can you tell people about that? Sure. Um, so whether we need ideas for blog topics or topic ideas for social media posts, the content team and I regularly use chat GPT. I simply tell the bot who the client is, who their target audience is, and what their goals are. And the bot usually gives suggestions or at the very least gives me some inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, Angel, I'm looking at my notes. Never mind. That's all I had to say about SEO stuff. So I am going to let you continue to talk now. (laughs) But um, Uh, Well, you know, it's always something I'm happy to discuss. So I will totally do that. (laughs) Um, Like we said at the beginning of the episode, we do highly recommend using ChatGPT as a small business because It can help you save time. And this is especially true when it comes to content creation. So whether you need a little bit of inspiration for content or you literally want a first draft created for you, ChatGPT can help with that. Um, And one of the ways that I regularly use ChatGPT is to create outlines. Personally, I always outline a piece of content before I write just so that I have a clear direction. And while I can and often do create the outlines myself, ChatGPT is a really great tool for getting outlines started and just saving me some time. So for example, if I need to write a blog post for one of our clients, I'll tell ChatGPT who the client is, who their ideal audience is, and ask the bot to just outline a blog about whatever topic I need to write about. And then it gives me an outline in a matter of seconds. So that obviously saves us a lot of time. Um, I do typically need to adjust the outline a bit to make sure that the blog or piece of content I'm working on really works well for the client. But it gives me a good start and sometimes even gives me points or ideas that I haven't considered but really should be included in the content. And while outlines are super helpful, ChatGPT can also literally develop whole pieces of content for you. You can instruct it to write blogs, social media posts, podcast scripts, uh, video scripts, email subject lines, and I could go on and on and on nearly any other form of content that you need. And I know we're going to talk about it a bit later, um, 
and we've talked about it a little bit, but I do want to note that while ChatGPT can help you produce content, the content it generates should very much be looked at as a first draft to help you get started. And we'll discuss why in a little bit, but I just want to reiterate that please, please, please do not just copy and paste ChatGPT content to your website, social media, or anywhere else and just call it a day. You're going to want to make adjustments, um, but having a solid first draft can really save you a lot of time. And then also when you're developing content with ChatGPT, remember that you can continue conversations, like Kelly said. Um, as a result, if you don't like the content the bot produces or it isn't quite right, you can actually tell it things like try again or give me another option or make the tone more casual or give it really any instruction that you would give a person that you're brainstorming with, which can help you save even more time by giving you that stronger first draft. Mm -hmm. And another thing that you'll probably even talk about too is that like if you have a specific writing style or you follow mm -hmm. a specific right. something or other, you can give ChatGPT that information. But again, like Angel said, just don't use it word for word because <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like a robot. Yes. It's robot. still, it's still it, not a it, person. <laughs> Right. It doesn't take the place of, um, mm -hmm. you know, an expert or, you know, human thought, but it is a great starter. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. We definitely use it for that. And then another way we actually use ChatGPT is to repurpose content. So ChatGPT doesn't just produce content. It actually can understand the content that you give it, like we've talked about a little bit. Um, for example, if I get the podcast or the transcript from this podcast episode, I can copy and paste it into ChatGPT and ask it to create a coinciding blog post to summarize the episode, have it use the information to write some Facebook posts, or um, even ask it to give me copy for a Instagram carousel post. So repurposing content is always a great way to save time and get the most out of your marketing efforts. And ChatGPT makes repurpos repurposing that content just a lot easier. Um, again, you only, uh, I'm going to say it again, please fine tune this content um, and just think of it as a first draft, but it'll be super, super helpful. Um, and then last but not least, I often use chat GPT just to get some feedback on copy. For example, if I'm not sure about a subject line or I've just been staring at content too long, which happens sometimes, I'll give chat GPT the content and ask if it has any suggestions on making the subject line stronger or different ways I can say it. Um, that helps a lot when I'm brainstorming. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you brought this up because um, I do it too. So like I'll be writing marketing guiding statements for a client and maybe struggling with wording because there's so much that I want to say and I have too many commas and right. I don't feel like I can take mm -hmm. anything out. You know, I can ask it, hey, how would you say this differently or be more concise? Um, and then the other thing I can do is that for the paid subscription, you can actually give it links. So I can say, hey, based on best practices in this article, can you give me you know, an update on this or that. And it can take into consideration the information in that article and then like look at your subject line for email based on the content we give it and the best practices. So it's pretty helpful. Um, you can be really creative with it. Oh, yeah. And I mean, during keyword research, I think I did already say this, but I'll give chat GPT a few long tail keyword options and then I'll ask it which it thinks is the strongest or if it has any suggestions. I mean, based off of the target audience that I all also give it. But, you know, that being said, I do think it's important to note that chat GPT doesn't necessarily always <laughs> know best. Like some of times, like we talked about this a little bit already, but sometimes the options it gives are truly obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes it gives just like super over the top content or the wording just isn't right for the client's messaging or brand or target audience. And we've even, the content team has even sent each other some like hilarious outlandish responses <laughs> oh, yeah. that we've gotten, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of comical, but yeah, that's another reason why you need to obviously put that human touch on it. Um, and it's so important to use, that's why it's so important to use chat GPT as as inspiration and just for your first drafts, it's a great tool, mm -hmm. but you really need to make sure that you're using that common sense, abiding by best practices, and for sure staying true to your brand and messaging. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I just watched a video on TikTok and I think it was Neil Patel that said it was like crazy amount of um, engagement difference between AI generated content and human um, intervened content. Um, so that was pretty amazing that, that the studies are starting to come out and, you know, the, the analytical reports are able to come out that you really shouldn't just copy and paste bot stuff into what you're doing, but really putting that human touch on it. And you'll get a lot more engagement that way from both Google and, um, you know, your, your main audience. 
Yes. And actually, I have that data in my notes to share with everybody here in just a little bit. So let's talk about a couple other ways that people can use it, and then we'll get into all of that. If you can't tell, guys, we really don't want you to copy and paste this. (laughs) You really just don't. (laughs) But I promise we'll explain why. It's not just like, don't do that. Like, I swear there are reasons we're going to get into. But (laughs) Angel, anyway, thank you so much for breaking down like all the ways that people can use it to produce content. I mean, content development is stressful and time-consuming for so many small businesses. So I have no doubt the listeners are going to appreciate all the content development tips you just shared. And for those listening who have not been producing content here lately because it takes up so much time, like guys, you have no excuse now. You can get at least a solid first draft at right very minimum. Go but. down, like go download the keyword document, learn about how to use yeah. keywords, <laughs> and then write your content. Get a good start with Chat GPT. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Chat GPT will save you tons of time. The other stuff maybe not so much, but (laughs) when you're all said and done, everything's going to look great. But Kelly, I am sure that our regular listeners won't be at all surprised that, you know, all the chat GPT uses that we've discussed so far are marketing specific. Oops, I just lost a headphone. Um, (laughs) Oops. Sorry. <laughs> hey, if you'd be work. old school like me, you wouldn't have. Right? You, wouldn't have you just got too excited yeah. about chat GPT. <laughs> I know. I have this whole, this whole entire episode. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> looks pretty bad on AirPods part right now, but it's all, all is good. <laughs> But um, yes, yeah, so everything we've shared so far, like it is marketing specific, but there are definitely other ways that you can use this program. So Kelly, would you mind explaining just a couple ways that small businesses can use ChatGPT to improve their customer service and save time in this area of business? Because, you know, it is just as important. Yeah. And one of the ways that we do use it um, is for like this next example that I'm going to, that I'm going to share. But I know that I'm not alone here, but sometimes it can be really difficult to determine how to respond um, to like emails, inquiries, comments, reviews, all of those types of things. And having a template um, can be very helpful. Um, and something, sometimes things throw you for a loop um, and you just, and you don't have a template to work from. So we have common templates that we use um, for lots of things. So if you don't have templates, that's a whole nother show, but you really should um, that and automation and all of those types of things. But sometimes we get some really interesting things and we're not sure how to properly respond, right? Yes. Sometimes Guys, we could happens. do a whole episode <laughs> yeah. on just some of the ridiculous, hilarious inquiries, but that is Never. I'm going to stop there. Yeah. See, if- ChatGPT would not bring this up. This is why it's a better coworker than I am. But <laughs> yes. So, like, if you're a service based business, um, I'm sure, like us, you occasionally um, are going to receive like inquiries from prospects who are just not a good fit, and it's really hard telling people that they're not a good fit or that you know you want to help them, but you can, or maybe they have no budget, like all of these types of things, um, or that maybe like their inquiry um, includes some red flags, people that um, you just don't want to work with. Like the ones that say, I I have zero budget, but I need you to do $10,000 worth of work. You know, we get that a lot being a Christian-based organization. They're like, hey, we need you to do this. You're a Christian-based organization. You should do it for free. Here it is. And we're like, we want to help you, but uh, I need some help with this, right? So knowing that um, working together just wouldn't be good. So whether they're not a great fit or you don't do what they want to do, sometimes you get thrown for a loop um, for those types of things. So we want to be respectful. Um, we want to take the emotion out of it. Um, it can be difficult to respond um, to these types of messages, but chat GPT can actually draft an email or response. Um, if you simply explain the situation to the bot, the bot and you ask it to draft a response for you um, with a little bit of tweaking afterwards, of course, right? Because we're not copying and pasting things. Um, it can really save you time and headaches and still allow you to quickly and easily respond to these inquiries because you can say, Hey, this is what I'm worried about. Um, this is what I need to say. I don't know how to say it. These are the things that, that I worry about. I want this to be positive, you know, those types of things. Um, because chat GBT can also help you draft like more positive emails, comments, or other responses. Sometimes we have a tendency to say, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do this, but we, it needs to be more of 
positive facing, right? We don't always want to tell people, no, we want to give them some other resources, give them help along the way. So as a business leader, um, or even, you know, a business owner, you can't afford, uh, to live in your inbox or spend all of your time respond- responding to all of these emails, um, you know, with personal messages. Sometimes, um, it's better to have some kind of template that you can use or utilize chat GPT to kind of more quickly give you that response for some of those, um, loop thrown for a loop type of questions. Um, and if you don't have any templates for some of the things that you're always getting questions to, um, it can also help, um, help you do that. But again, don't use it word for word, take what it gives you and then be sure it fits with how you'd say something or, um, within your brand tone. Yeah. So, and then when you develop those templates, get them into HoneyBook. So you just have developed it one time and you can just right. push buttons to send it. Right. Then There's you can automate book. all of your welcome <laughs> messaging and, and all of your messaging mm-hmm. for new appointments and all, all kinds of stuff to save you even more time. And money. As a small business owner, you probably have a seemingly endless to-do list, but I can almost promise that there are things on your list that can be outsourced like grocery shopping. I mean, as a wedding photographer, the last thing I wanted to do after shooting a wedding on a Saturday was to spend my Sunday in a grocery store. So I am forever thankful that a friend told me about Instacart. Instacart is a grocery delivery service. Basically, you use the Instacart app to make your shopping list. Then a personal shopper goes to your preferred store, selects your groceries for you, and delivers them to you, typically all within just a few hours. You can also schedule your delivery time. Personally, I will sing Instacart its praises forever because one, it has saved me countless hours and two, Instacart employs local personal shoppers, meaning with every Instacart purchase, you are putting money directly back into your local economy. Well, Instacart does charge a delivery fee. When you upgrade to Instacart Plus for just $99 a year, you'll receive free unlimited deliveries for all orders over $35. Considering the time and frustration you'll save, that's $99 well spent. If you'd like to avoid going to the grocery store and save $20 on your first order from Instacart of $35 or more, visit treefrogmarketing.com slash Instacart. Again, if you'd like $20 off your first Instacart order of $35 or more, visit treefrogmarketing.com slash Instacart. What would you do with an extra 45 minutes every workday? That would save you 16 hours a month or roughly eight days a year. And over the course of your career, we're talking about over one year of your life saved all that time back. Well, many independent business owners spend far more than 45 minutes a day on administrative tasks. And with HoneyBook, you can get that time back and then some. HoneyBook lets you easily manage projects, contracts, invoices, scheduling, and client communication, saving you time and allowing you to better serve your clients. For a discount on your first year of HoneyBook, visit honeybook.com and subscribe with the code Priority Pursuit. 45 minutes a day adds up quickly. Use it to focus on what matters most. Okay. So Kelly, one thing, another thing that we wanted to make sure that we discussed was the fact that, you know, chat GPT is a chat bot, but small businesses can actually put it on their own websites as a chat bot. So would you mind breaking that down for listeners? Because this one still like just truly blows my mind. Yeah. Because, you know, we all use those chat bots like we talked about at the beginning Mm -hmm. of the episode of like, I just want a real person. (laughs) It's like when you, when you call someone and you're like, nine, 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 just give me a customer service, right? Like I, I've tried all of the things, chatbot. Just give me someone, right? But ChatGPT kind of, it, it can really improve your customer service because it, it's a different type of chatbot on your website. And we'll include a link in the show notes um, to an article from actually HubSpot that explains how you can do this. Um, but essentially, you can integrate ChatGPT into your own site and you can train it to understand your products and services um, and how you want it to respond. So, but as a reminder, Chat GPT isn't your typical frustrating chatbot. It's highly intelligent. And as a result, it's actually capable of serving your customers and answering their questions well, as opposed to you trying to think about the 90 things that people could ask and like preempting chatbots to be able to answer those. Um, so again, you can learn more about this um, in the article that we're going to link in the show notes. But if your customers would appreciate a chatbot on your website, utilizing this chat GPT feature um, is a great and actually very affordable way to serve them. Um, Ugh, and it actually yes. works. So yeah, you're not going to irritate them. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm yeah. still mind blown by the fact that this is possible. I mean, especially for small businesses, because this used to be something that like one, it was expensive to integrate and two, you paid all this money to integrate it. And then it still was just junk and not helpful. Right. I mean, 
junk is a great word for that because we've all <laughs> ran into those frustrating <laughs> chatbots and I can't say it enough, you know. And the last thing that we want to do as a small business is to frustrate our customers mm -hmm. because um, it will cost you sales. So like in a lot of the marketing books, you know, they talk about, oh, it doesn't matter. You can irritate, you know, you only need 10% of your business or whatever. So you can irritate millions mm -hmm. of people. It doesn't matter. You just need these 10%. Well, that doesn't ring true for small business. We can't irritate customers because we don't have a millions of customer, you know, um, audience that we're talking to. So we want to be as helpful as we, we can, so we can build those relationships and mm -hmm. we care about our customers. So we actually don't want to frustrate anybody. So stop using the chat bots <laughs> that drive you insane. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we've talked about ChatGPT from a marketing perspective, from a customer service perspective. And then guys, before we wrap up this episode, I want to just touch on a couple other ways you can use this bot just to save time because we all know that as small businesses, time is our most valuable commodity. And as a small business owner or leader, like your time is crazy valuable. So whatever we can do to save time, we're all in. But yes, another way you can use ChatGPT is to break down complicated processes. So just as an example, when I got a new MacBook earlier or last year, for whatever reason, like I could not get it to connect to my external monitor. And I mean, I wouldn't say I'm the most tech savvy person, but I am not the least tech savvy person. Like there's no reason I should not be able to connect a monitor to my computer. I was so frustrated. But anyway, the instructions that Apple provided, they just were not helpful. And it was late. So like not wanting to set up a call with Apple's customer support, I was, was just curious. So I asked ChatGPT, how to connect to the external monitor. It gave me instructions. It let me ask clarifying questions when things did not plug in, where it said it was going to plug in, and ultimately like, helped me get the monitors to connect. So, because so quick note to, to Apple, mm -hmm. maybe you should add ChatGPT <laughs> yeah. to your website. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think they actually like do have a bit of an, I think they do have an integration now, but I mean, this was uh, probably six months ago. Yeah. So it's it's been a while, but... <laughs> <laughs> But then, you know, then I was like, explain it to me like I'm five. And right. so that really happened. No, I, I don't think I did that time, but I may have. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so because ChatGPT is able to scour the internet for essentially any and all information within reason, it's not going to like give you people's addresses or social security numbers, just for the record. <laughs> right. It's a great tool when you need help or instructions, even if it's for like something like really specific. Like maybe you're in your email service provider, like, whether you're in MailChimp or ConvertKit or whatever, and you can't get something to work, like ChatGPT might have the answer if you can't find it through your provider. Um, then uh, another way that you can use ChatGPT, and okay, I say another way, but this is like 5 million ways under one point, <laughs> but <laughs> countless plugins, apps, and other tools have started incorporating ChatGPT. And as a result, there are likely tools that you're already using that you can now utilize more efficiently. So just to give you a couple examples, Canva has a chat GPT integration that allows you to literally tell the chatbot what you need created and to give it edits so you can have a graphic design like in moments. Like you can tell like I need a shout, I need an invitation for my sister-in-law's bridal shower. Here's the information. This is the address. I want it to be boho chic and it will <laughs> produce something <laughs> in a matter of moments. And then like if you also have the chat GPT integration uh, and this allows you to tell the bot what apps you need integrated and it will literally take care of this for you. That's huge. Zapier is so helpful, but man, oh man, do I hate getting into the back end. Like there are so many buttons and Thank you, ChatGPT. Right. Google Calendar. You just you want to explain it like a five year old, and yes. then let ChatGPT sure. do yes. all the hard stuff. I, got, like, yeah. I, I want them to push this button, and I want you to send this yeah. email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> But thankfully at TreeFrog, we also have Mary to figure that out for us. Right, she is right. our Zapier <laughs> right. wizard and she knows where the buttons are. Anyway, uh, Google Calendar also has an integration you can use to add appointments and such to your calendar. So this kind of allows, you know, ChatGPT to become a very affordable virtual assistant. And then Instacart, which, you know, I love because I hate going to the grocery store, has a chat GPT integration that can give you recipes and then add ingredients to your cart. 
I actually love this because, you know, as I've already said, I probably said like five times in this episode, like I am terrible at meal planning and it is really nice to open Instacart and it's like, hey, like you want to try this thing? Like, yes, add all of these ingredients to my cart. Thank you, Instacart. Yes. Thank you, ChatGPT. That's right. But- ChatGPT, do you have a chef that you can send to my yeah. house too? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Someday, ChatGPT will start cooking and it'll be great (laughs) until then. Uh, Yes, but guys, more and more companies and tools are integrating ChatGPT all the time. So if you're using a tool regularly, it is certainly worth seeing if these tools now have time-saving AI capabilities as a result of ChatGPT. I mean, isn't it wild just to think about how many things chat GPT is capable of and mm-hmm. how many ways small businesses alone can use it. I mean, forget the fact that it's probably going to take over the world. It's going to make <laughs> our lives a lot easier, but mm-hmm. it's like scary and amazing all at the same right. time. Right? right. So, um, but I'm, we're probably honestly, cause we could talk about it all day getting mm-hmm. to the point where, um, we are overwhelming our listeners with all this information because we're like, Oh yeah, you can do this. And Oh yeah, you can do that. And don't forget about this. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Uh, we <laughs> absolutely know we can wrap it up, but I do just want to say it's like I fully recognize I am not, you know, powerful enough to defeat chat GPT. So I'm just going to use it to my advantage. <laughs> yeah, if it takes over right. the world, that's that's fine. But I'm going to use <laughs> it to my advantage in the meantime. But we've already anyway. given everybody all of our personal information anyway. <laughs> yeah, so just keep yeah. moving forward. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But yes, all right. We digress. Long story short, y'all, <laughs> Chat GPT can save you time and even help you improve your marketing, customer service, and other aspects of your life and business. So if you haven't tried it or you aren't leveraging it to its full potential, be sure to try a couple of the things that we mentioned in this episode. And then on that note, though, there are two Chat GPT options. So there's a free version and a paid version, and There are some differences. Kelly, do you want to break down the differences between the two? Sure. Uh, So like Victoria said, there's a free version. um, And honestly, you can do much of what we discussed um, in this episode by going to chat.openai.com and registering for a free account. However, um, as we record this episode, ChatGPT Plus is only $20 a month and does include some key features that are worth paying for, um, in our opinion, um, for many small businesses. First, with the paid version, you are guaranteed access to the bot um, and you get faster response times. The free version sometimes is a little bit slow. And if the bot is too busy, um, there may be times that you literally can't use it. You just have to wait and try again later, which can be frustrating because if you're, if you need an answer, those types of things, or you're working, you're in the middle of something, it's like, sorry, I'm busy. Um, which is why we went to the the paid version too. We use the um, free version for a long time, but the paid um, subscribers, you also get access to uh, new updates and capabilities. Um, and you have the ability to create custom chat box kind of like what we um, discussed earlier that you can add to your website. Um, you can utilize images. You can um, have that read links um, and it has access to the internet. So internet access is arguably the most important reason um, to upgrade because the free version doesn't have um, internet access. And at the time of this recording, I think it only contains data and information um, available in the bots database, which only includes information up to 2021, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, guys, I guess just for the record, we are putting it like as we record this, chat GPT yeah. changes pretty rapidly and all the time. So as of today, yes. this information is accurate. When this airs, honestly, it might Probably. not be. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it doesn't have access. Um, so if you're using the database, it doesn't have access to like the latest news and data and all the things that you can imagine. You get irritating responses like, well, I can't access the internet. So I don't know. But back in 2021, here's the answer. And you're like, ah, oh, it's not helpful. Um, so especially when you're trying to develop content, you're trying to, you know, look at analytics, look at industry information, um, those types of things. Um, you know, where all the data actually matters, uh, you know, like marketing. Um, it would probably be more important um, for you to spend that 20 bucks a month and um, get that pro version. But you can do a lot with the free version, um, but really for a small fee, um, you can do even more. So at the very least, be sure to give the free version a try with some of the examples that um, we've kind of talked about today. Absolutely. And yeah, considering all chat GPT is capable of, that $20 a month is nothing. Uh, that said, as you use ChatGPT for your small business, there are a couple things you want to be cautious of. 
other than the obvious, like don't share your social security number or other private information with the bot. I hope that goes without saying (laughs) be smart. (laughs) It's very helpful. It's not your best friend. Don't tell it all your deepest, darkest secrets or information you wouldn't (laughs) tell somebody on the street. But (laughs) Angel, you have already mentioned a couple times that you should never copy and paste content from ChatGTP. Would you mind explaining like you're just expanding on this and then um, the other things people should be aware of as they use this program. Sure. So in case we haven't said it enough times, <laughs> do not just copy and paste the content that ChatGPT produces. And we say this for a few reasons. First of all, while ChatGPT is highly intelligent, you need to be able to verify the information it provides and make sure that it's accurate. Um, like we discussed, ChatGPT <laughs> provides answers by scouring the internet or using its existing database. Um, So in the case of the free version, which Kelly explained, it only has information through 2021, at least at the time of this recording. And because the internet contains inaccurate information and because the free version doesn't have the most up-to-date info, it can give you false or outdated information. For example, in the content we produce for Tree Frog, we do our best to back everything we produce with numbers and data. As a result, we're sure to check every percentage or data point that Chat GPT gives us, um, just to make sure that we're providing only the most accurate info and marketing advice. So use it, use the bot to help you produce content, but make sure you're checking the information it gives you against reliable sources, um, and then always update your content accordingly. And in addition to updating content to make sure that it's accurate, you also need to update content to ensure it doesn't sound robotic and is true to your brand and messaging. For example, sometimes I'll tell chat GPT to write a social media post for a client. And while I give them all the info, the client's info, target audience, and an example of their tone, it'll still give me something that doesn't really sound like the client. And while I can still give chat GPT instructions to edit the post, it's more often more efficient to ineffective to really use chat GPT what it produces as a basis um, or a draft and then update the post so that it sounds a little bit more like the client and a a little bit more true to their brand so and in addition to making the sure the tone is correct you'll also want to update the content like we said to make it sound a little bit more human like chat GPT often produces content that sounds a little bit robotic and not human and if your content sounds like that and sounds spammy and forced I can almost promise you that prospects won't really want to engage with your content because they'll sense that Um, and like Kelly said there have been studies out there too that have compared engagement uh, between bot created content and people created content. Um, So that's something to keep in mind for sure. And then a big one I want to point out is that chat GPT tends to use a specific format when it makes content. So the content's really easy to recognize, especially when it comes to social media posts. Um, So this technology is helpful, but your audience wants to hear from you and your team because you're the experts. And if your audience can tell your content has been produced by a bot, this is a red flag. And it's also... It's something like even when I'm scrolling through Facebook, I'll see a post and be like, that's definitely from ChatGPT. Just the way that it's it's using certain terms or it's using emojis or the format and stuff. Um, and the more popular ChatGPT co- becomes, more people will be able to recognize that. Um, so this is a red flag, obviously, for people reading, but it's also a big red flag for Google. And Victoria, do you want to explain that last part a little bit? Oh, you know that I do. But <laughs> yes, guys, long story short, as we've discussed in past episodes just about SEO, you know, Google's goal is to provide its users with the most relevant and helpful content as quickly as possible. That's literally why Google exists. And because Google knows that people don't want to engage with content that sounds robotic or spammy, if Google notices that your content is less than helpful and clearly AI produced, your SEO is likely to be harmed, not helped. Um, Kelly was talking about some stats from Neil Patel before, but yeah, according to Neil Patel and his team, 94% of the time, human-created content is going to outrank AI-created content. And when I say AI-created content, I mean you are literally copying and pasting. Like, you're doing the thing we keep telling you not to do. Right. Use that as your first draft. Update it. And yes, while ChatGPT knows a lot, you and or your team 
like Angel said, you know, you guys are experts in your field. So for the sake of your SEO and to serve your audience well, it is so important to think of ChatGPT produced content as your first draft. Then to write your next draft, use what the bot gave you and make it sound more natural and true to your brand, like Angel said, and add your own expertise. Again, you're the expert in your field. This program can help you get started and save you hours of time, but you know more than ChatGPT does, believe it or not, like on your specific thing. Like ChatGPT kind of thinks it knows everything, but on your field, you know more than this bot does. So use the AI program to save time, but use your expertise to produce great, truly helpful content. Yeah. I mean, it is a great tool, but by no means does it replace mm-hmm. uh, your expertise. And I don't know how many times it's it's given me a result like in this industry's landscape, like mm-hmm. nobody talks like that. <laughs> right. So right. like, don't, I mean, sure. It sounds good. And maybe like academia, right? Mm-hmm. Like sure. if, if kids didn't get, you know, caught using AI bot- bots all the time, it might be very helpful for them. But in for small businesses, we don't talk like that. Um, so again, use it as your um, first draft. But I, we know this episode has kind of um, turned into a really long one. Mm-hmm. Um, but long story short, ChatGBT chat GBT, is a free or um, at least a very affordable, depending on if you get um, the plus version or not, that you can use um, to help your small business better understand your audience. Um, It can produce content more efficiently, uh, better serve your customers, and um, so much more. It's really endless. I mean, if you can be creative on how you utilize this to help get your brain processed, especially like Angel said, if you're an external processor, Mm -hmm. it is great for that. Um, So if you aren't currently using this tool um, or you aren't leveraging it to its full potential, visit chat.openai.com and just give it a try. Try some of the prompts that we've given you. Mm -hmm. um, Do some research for some other prompts. Um, You try to make dinner tonight and see what happens. Um, (laughs) We'll we'll also include that link um, in the show notes as well. Yes, guys. And on that note, Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Priority Pursuit Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, we hope you'll take a moment to share it with your small business friends. You know, we can all benefit from ChatGPT to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and that you'll join us next week for even more marketing, boundary, and priority-driven tactics you can use to build a life and small business that you love.